Meow. This is Joe with Jovian Technologies, and uh, we're proud to have one of our biggest sponsors. We, we, we would love to thank them for their support. Woodchuck! Woodchuck Draft Cider. When a woodchuck chucks, you chug it down. Thank Woodchuck! Thank you, Woodchuck. Hi, I'm Joe with Jovian Technologies. I'm going to try to give you a quick run through today on how to build your own cloning station. What a cloning station would do is, uh, let's say you went through all the work of putting windows on a computer. Well, the next time a computer like that comes in again, you're going to have to do all that again, you know, and putting the updates and the windows and all the software and the files. That could take, you know, five hours or more. It's a real pain in the butt. And what we're going to do is, uh, to save time, we're going to have a bunch of different hard drives with different versions of operating systems with different driver manufacturer specifications. Now, normally you have to have pretty much very similar, like, um, machine hardware to use a clone from one disk to another. So... For example, what it'd be used for, the main reason that I'm using it right now is uh, I'm going to have a bunch of computers, they're all the same, I need to put the operating system on all of them, and I'm doing it the best way I know how and the fastest way. I'm not going to spend weeks, I'm going to spend, you know, maybe days, I could probably do it in one day if I spend enough time on it. Well, basically, um, all the updates and everything are one hard drive, I take this hard drive, I put it in, I take the hard drive out of another computer, I put it in the cloning station, and boom, same identical thing. I put this hard drive back in that computer. I use a key changer to change it to a legal Windows key, activate Windows, and boom, you got another running computer. It usually takes about 30 minutes to do this process. Uh, while it's cloning, you can uh, be out there cleaning the computer up, making it look great, and then, you know, on your needs, that's it. Alright, I really suck at these instructionals, and I don't speak up enough, I know, but I'm doing the best I can. Um, most of it's already done, because I don't think about doing the video until after I've already done the project. And so, sometimes that makes it a little difficult to instruct on how to do it, because I've already taken out all the screws and the cables and everything. But I'll try to point to you, tell you what I did, give you a quick run through, and hopefully this will help you do whatever you need to do. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, what you need to get started with, of course, is you need a desktop. You're going to need a monitor to see what you're doing. I have a monitor on a KVM switch so I can switch back and forth between several computers. But you can get by with just one monitor. Or if you have a KVM switch, it makes everything great. Okay, <clears throat> this is a Dell Optiplex 160L, and uh, this is optimal for copying what I'm doing. If you have a different one, you may have to modify what you do just a little bit. Um, basically, there's a little lever in the back, pop the side panel off. Okay, uh, there's a little latch in the top, and I'm going to stick a screwdriver up in there to get the little clip loose. Usually best to use a straight screwdriver. I'm going to use a pair of scissors here. I didn't really need to put this clip back on. I was just trying to make it look like it was on so I could save time, but it popped back in place. Come on. Alright, you get the top clip, it's a hard one, you just squeeze back these bottom two clips, the face plate will come off. <clears throat> Alright, um, you want to take out the hard drives on this particular model. <clears throat> um, this particular model, you have to... Uh, 
take out both these screws in the bottom to take out the hard drive chassis. And then uh, there's a screw inside here that you take out right there to get the first hard drive chassis out. I've already taken out these screws. Now I'll take the first one out. Uh, the other screw at the bottom is connected to this hard drive chassis. It also has a screw right here that you get to. No big deal. Easy stuff. Um, this particular one, uh, I had two screws right here to get the CD-ROM drive out. And you unplug the IDE cable, the power cable. Alright, the software that you're going to need is a Cronus True Home Image 10. Okay? You need the bootable disk, a Cronus True Home 10. Alright. If I, if I said the name wrong, I'm sorry, but uh, I forget stuff a lot. But a Cronus 10, basically. You just need the boot disk. Um, where you get it, it's your business. You can get it in many places, but uh, if you buy it, it definitely helps out the people who made it. So, and if you don't buy it, you know, whether you go to jail or not, it's up to you. <sighs> Alright, so check out the CD-ROM. I put my Cronus Disk 10 in here. I'm going to put the CD-ROM inside of the computer so that I can get it out of the way because the disk is going to stay in here. The disc will work up on its side. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to plug it back in. <coughs> I'm going to get a screwdriver. Really should have had this all together, huh? But see, I suck at these videos. Alright, I'm going to get a screwdriver. I'll take this screw out. Now this is the part I haven't done. I just thought about this a little while ago. I'm going to replace the screw with a regular screw that doesn't have the little gap on it. Because I want this thing to stay in place. I want it to move around. And you don't want to move this thing around while you're burning either. Plug in the power cable. Pulling the original hard drive uh, IDE master cable out because uh, you want to put in a longer one that has the master and slave, and it's best if it has these little plastic things because you're going to unplug it and plug it up a lot. There are probably better ways of doing this. This is my way, this is the best way I could find. There are plenty other software solutions. This is a hardware solution mostly. And hardware solutions are just uh, more reliable in a way. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to flip this up on its side. Need to unplug everything. Make sure that there is no power connected in the computer when you do this. Because, you know, bad things can happen. Alright, I'm going to pull up the screw here. I'm trying to match it up to the CD ROM. I don't even know if this thing is going to fit. I guess I should have checked that first, huh? Okay, well, duh. I didn't check it first, so we're going to improvise. I could drill a hole, but I don't feel like it. So, what I'm going to use. It's a favorite thing that I love to use for mounting stuff. Set this back up here. Have to be careful. This will scratch up your disc. I got to scratch mine up bad. Favorite thing I love to use for mounting. Still got to take the screw out though. This 3M two-sided mounting tape. This stuff will hold like a hundred pounds. Uh, you get it at Walmart. It's about five dollars. Use what you want, but this stuff is strong. Gonna put a strip of it on the bottom. Gonna make sure that there's no dust in the computer so it sticks well. So uh, I'm gonna grab some rubbing alcohol. <coughs> some 
wiping some rubbing alcohol in here so uh so that the tape's gonna bond well. And again you'll figure out why I'm putting it on the inside in a little while. Hopefully if I get this done before I run out of memory on my camera. Alright. Put the tape on. It only takes a few minutes for the alcohol to dry. Great tape to stick just about anything with. For projects, it's a lifesaver. Alright. My CD is in the drive, by the way. Probably a good idea to slide the drive back as far as I can. In case I ever need to take the CD out. Then it's going to be a pain in the butt. Still going to be a pain in the butt. Press it down, give it a good wiggle. Make sure it got a good seal. And uh, that should do. <laughs> All right. Since I got that pressed down, uh, okay. I cut these cables loose so I can get a better reach on the power cables because they're binded together. not long enough, it's going to cause you a lot of trouble, too much cord now. Okay, next step is, uh, there's a little prongs here, these prongs lock the hard drive in place, you want to bend those out, because <coughs> the way we're doing it, we want it to be able to slide in and out, so we're going to bend those little things out of the way because we don't want them getting in the way of you sliding the hard drive in and out. And if you know a better way to do this, that's fine. But just don't get on my YouTube calling me a dumb butt. Because right. comments like that are not invited. Okay, I've labeled these. Um, I do uh, disc two is the source and disc one is the destination. Just because I like the source drive to be on the bottom, you can do that whatever way you want to. It's just the way I do it. it seems to work very well because I can do multiple size partitions that way. Uh, you put all the hard drives on cable select that go into it, and they seem to work fine like that. Alright, this is going to be your hard drive slide. Drives are going to slide in here, and then you're going to plug them in in the back. 